Welcome to my video update on the development progress for the Steam VR simulation of the 1851 Great Exhibition. We start this update outside the western entrance of the Crystal Palace. A number of larger exhibits were enclosed by the building's boundary railing, and for this update we have added two greenhouses by Dench. The main selling point of these greenhouses is that they were glazed without the use of putty, allowing rapid replacement of broken panes. We now pass the railway crossing gates, anchors and cheese ring column to the western entrance. Entering the building via the western entrance, we pass the model of Liverpool docks towards Panormo statue of Caractacus, behind this is a loom. Crossing to the other side of the nave, on the wall of the leather section, we find a decorated leather hide by John Deed. This hide is now at the Wandel Industrial Museum, and we are grateful to them for allowing us to use their image. Returning to the nave and continuing east, we come to a set of Ashford black marble tables. The chess table on the right has been added with this update. It, along with the round table in the middle, are at Buxton Museum and Art Gallery, and we are grateful to them for allowing us to use their images of the table tops. The table on the left is from a contemporary image from the exhibition. As we continue east, passing the Colbrickdale Dome, the statue of Shakespeare, the Dent Clock and the colossal statue of Eldon and Stoll, we turn south and enter the British Sculpture Court. Here on the west wall we have added the Baptism of Christ by John Edward Carew. This is in the Church of St. John the Baptist in Brighton, and we are grateful to them for allowing us to photograph it to make this model. The version actually displayed at the Great Exhibition was believed to be a plaster model very similar to this. Returning back out of the British Sculpture Court and into the Medieval Court, we finish this update with a number of stained glass windows by Augustus Pugin mounted on the north wall. We acknowledge the help of Jasmine Allen of the Stained Glass Museum in identifying and locating these windows. From left to right. Ethelbert and Bertha now on the west wall of the south aisle at St. Augustine's Ramsgate. This image is provided by Katrina Blaker. Next to this, above the west door, are three lights depicting St. Andrew and scenes from the New Testament. These are now on the north wall of St. Andrew Farnham. The images are by Alistair Carew Cox. Next are images of the crucifixion and transfiguration from the chancel east window of St. Andrew Farnham. These are actually mounted one above the other in the church, but there is insufficient room to do so in space shown in this wall in contemporary illustrations, so we assume they were split as shown here. These images are also by Alistair Carew Cox. Next are images of the St. Thomas Chantry window at St. Edmund's College where the original windows were lost during World War II. These are images of the similar, not identical, replacements, and we are grateful to David Kay of St. Edmund's College for providing us with these images. Next are three panes from the dining room at Alton Towers. These windows were lost in the 1950s, and the replacements are of a different design. The only known image is this black and white photograph courtesy of Historic England Archive. Finally we come to two windows of two lights each from the south wall of the Lady Chapel of St. Augustine's Ramsgate depicting various scenes of the Blessed Virgin. On the right is the west window. These two are again by Alistair Carew Cox. On the left is the east window. These images are from the St. Augustine virtual tour. Look out for my next video update.